Ladies and gentlemen, let's for a game to come video. We're going to very briefly discuss the Xbox One PS4, and it's a little bit to do with ES RAM, but primarily it should add a little bit of an insight into the um, technology of both systems, actually. And primarily in terms of HSA, it's not anything amazingly new here, but regardless, we start out with ES RAM first because it's kind of the lead quote. So I can't speak to whether or not this will be patched. This was in um, answer, by the way, to whether there was actually any patch or um, workarounds necessary regarding ESRAM for developers. And they said that I can't speak to whether or not it will be patched or approved in future, but I wouldn't think it would be as a developer. Games developers are mastering a master's engineering workarounds to hardware limitations. I think you see unique and novel technology developed for such a purpose. So, the big question is, what do they actually think regarding the similar architecture? Um, and they actually responded, we are delighted with the updates to the next generation hardware, but of course always want more. The unified nature and architecture of the APUs, that's accelerated processing units, allow us to easily leverage massive amounts of resources for all kinds of features, including rendering, physics, animation, and more. Though the PS4 and X1 don't offer an enormous jump over the previous generation in terms of raw processing power, the custom AMD APUs with both platforms represent a huge leap forward in terms of integration and capability. This scene to us is a thin and very fast intercommunication layer between was once used to deal with separate chips. Practically, this yields great results when used to projection techniques like reflections or occlusions, as well as massive compute shader calculations, which we use for all of our deferred lighting computation. I actually find this a really interesting comment. There's actually a couple of really interesting comments here. Um, I'd like to actually really dive into this a little bit more. I wish there was a little bit more said regarding this. Um, in terms of raw processing power, I would like to know whether they're specifically referring to the GPUs, the CPUs, or an account, or a combination of both. The CPUs of both systems, that's the PS4 and Xbox One, certainly don't seem to be as amazing as what we'd hoped. And indeed, you can actually see this yourselves. I did a breakdown of this on my post-mortem of Infamous Second Son. But basically speaking, inf um, the developers of Infamous, that's Sucker Punch, stated, this isn't verbatim, but pretty much um, equivalent of the, the one area they're having issues with the PS4 is the CPU performance. It's just not as fast as what they'd hoped. And basically, um, the out-of-order nature of the CPU is actually causing them some problems when it comes to optimization. However, in terms of GPU performance, both machines are a lot faster than the previous generation. So I would like for them to have discussed that a little bit more. However, Crytek do seem fairly adamant in the fact that it's actually the the nature, the combined and uh, interconnected nature, the unified architectures of the APUs, which is actually providing the most amount of uh, gains over the previous generation which is a fairly interesting statement, if I do say so myself. I imagine most of this would come from the HSA and uh, the humor technologies in that you don't really need to worry so much about memory copying. You don't need to worry about many things apart from the syncing of data. And that's probably going to be the big thing for both systems. Uh, this is another point that Naughty Dog made, and I also think that um, I actually forgotten their names to be honest, which is really, really, really weak. But the developers behind the Order 1886, also known as Ready at Dawn, he says, remembering at the last minute, is like a sweat. Imagine me with like a little sweat emotion con as I try to remember it like live, and that would be me. So anyway, as I said, not anything particularly new in terms of information, but I just thought that was. Kind of interesting regarding how much of a big deal that they're making this uh, integrated technology in comparison to the actual performance and leap. And I'd like to hear more developers actually speak about this. And the fact of the matter is, it's really difficult because we've heard from a lot of middleware developers. They're 
you know, pretty happy to speak out. We've also heard from a lot of indie developers. But the bottom line is, it's like, let's say you're developing... Okay, this is a gross ex over ex simplification, but let's say you're developing a game like Pong on the Xbox One or the PS4 or whatever. It's not really going to be pushing the system. So if I ask you, hey, did you have any problems running Pong on the, the you know, system, the Xbox One ES RAM? Well, the entire game code is going to fit in the ES RAM, so you don't really need to worry, do you? So that's kind of the problem. It's like, I've noticed a lot of sites are pushing, like, that same motto. Um, you know, they'll ask a small developer, how did the game run on the system? And obviously, if you're running something like, oh, I don't know, Daylight, for example, that's a bit different. But when it's like a 2D platformer, it's not really going to be challenging the systems too much. Anyway, I'll uh, see you guys soon. Take care and bye for now.